dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Today on Liberty's Kids. The British are marching on Lexington and Concord by sea. We have no time to waste. Lives are at stake. The regulars are coming. The regulars are coming. The regulars are coming. The regulars are coming. Five April, 1775. Dear Mother, Dr. Franklin insists that his newspaper is stirring patriotism in the bosom of every colonist. But I am not so sure. There is no doubt that political passions run high here in the colonies. But there are so many people with so many different backgrounds. It seems to me that no two of the colonies share the same interests. Pennsylvania and Virginia are as different as France and Holland, or so I am told. As for me, I am proud to remain steadfastly British. <gasps> It's me. You heard the voices, too? I think it is thieves! Or someone who disagrees with Dr. Franklin's newspaper. They're here to destroy the printing press! Come on! Look! Who goes there? Do you see anything? Good. Let us resume our business. I'll scare them. You trip them up. Run and get Moses. Oh, no need to get Moses. You already got him. Huh? Moses? But why? Why the sneaking around? Maybe he's a traitor and a spy. He could have fooled us all along. Don't be silly, Henri. I'm sure Moses has a perfectly logical explanation. Oh, my back. Oh. Of course I have a logical explanation. I'm no traitor. I'm a mechanic. You can fix a wagon. So? The mechanics are a secret group of patriots concerned about how Britain is treating the colonies. I thought that was the Sons of Liberty. That's another group. Its membership is reserved for men of commerce. We craftsmen, having no group of our own, decided to form one. We call ourselves mechanics. I never heard of them. Because these doings are not games. There's great danger in simply knowing about these secret societies. Oh, thanks to your enthusiastic defense of Dr. Franklin's print shop, my mission is in dire jeopardy. I was to deliver this urgent message to Dr. Joseph Warren, a colleague of Samuel Adams. We have heard from our sources that the British Army is moving out of Boston to New York. If the colonists along the way think the British are attacking, they might react with violence. We don't want that to happen, and now I can't warn Dr. Warren. I will take the letter to Boston, Moses. I'm your man. And who says a woman cannot be part of this vital undertaking? I'm going to! Sorry, Henri. I'm going to need you here to help me get around. As for you two... Moses, this message must be delivered. You said so yourself. There is no other alternative. You know I can do it. We can do it. Two have a better chance than one. That is true. But Moses, she's British! I may be British, but that doesn't mean I can't see both sides of the question. It's the violence and the bloodshed I fear and hate. It's settled. A 
A ship leaves for Boston at dawn bearing emergency supplies. I was to be on it. Now you two will go in my stead. No argument. As for tonight, get some rest. Don't see why I have to rest. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs> why so quiet? After all these long days and nights at sea, we're almost to Boston Harbor. I'm worried. I hope I'm not committing an act of treason. What would my mother think? We're saving lives. That's not treason. Stay down and hold on. There be trouble ahead. <gasps> A British frigate. If they catch us with contraband aboard... Oh! oh they're firing on us! Whoa! Look out! Just warning us off. The harbor's still closed. We'll lose them by staying in the shallow waters, close to the coast where they cannot go. But we're gonna have to put you ashore several miles south of Boston. I'm afraid you'll have to walk the rest of the way. Thank you! Goodbye! We have to walk through that? Unless you can sprout wings and fly. Fear not. We're only two hours from Boston. Uh, yuck! Don't worry. The frogs here are probably too big to fit into your shoes. Uh, these wretched bugs. Two hours, you said? It's been four, and they've been the longest hours of my life. Luckily, according to the maps, the road should be dead ahead. See? There it is! My dress is ruined. It'll dry soon enough. Let's eat. I'm starving. Someone's coming. We'd better hide. Who knows if they're friend or foe? Ah! British regulars. Halt. Halt, I say. I spy something on the ground there. Have a look, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Bread and cheese, sir. Dropped here within the last few minutes, I'd wager. Not an ant in sight. Now have a look around, but be quick about it. We must join the others in Boston tonight for tomorrow's journey to Lexington and Concord. <laughs> Nowhere else to hide. Perhaps there's someone on the road ahead of us. If that be so, we'll catch up with them shortly. Come. Yeah. That was close. That was messy. My clothes. Whoa. Sarah, the British are not going to New York at all. They're riding to Lexington and Concord. We have to tell Dr. Warren. Dear heavens! Dr. Warren? Yes, yes. Was there an accident? No accident, sir. That's not to say we looked this way on purpose. Let me get to the point, sir. We come from Philadelphia with an urgent message from the mechanics. But even more importantly... Hold on. I'm not aware of any mechanics who send messengers. What sort of mechanic? Cobbler? Wainwright? <gasps> I cannot talk to you now. Wait! We're from the printer. Ah, and the printer's wife, how is she? We both know he isn't married, sir. Come in, quickly. I must apologize for my interrogation, but with all the spies around, one can never be too careful. Well, now, you know who I am, but I don't know who you are, other than you've come from Dr. Franklin's print shop in Moses. The printer. Right. I'm Sarah Phillips, sir. James Hiller. Please excuse the way we look. We've been at sea for almost two weeks, and then walked through an endless swamp to get here. You came all the way from Philadelphia? Moses said our message was urgent. Hold on. There are some gentlemen here who should hear this. <gasps> 
James Hiller and Sarah Phillips, Paul Revere and William Dawes. Call me Billy. Please, I'm sure. James and Sarah have brought us urgent news from Philadelphia. What we've seen outside the city is much more pressing, sir. Boston Harbor remains blockaded, and the British are on the move, but they are marching on Lexington and Concord, not New York. That confirms everything we know. Tonight's the night. Yes, the rumors Moses heard about the British marching on New York are completely false. The rumors we heard from the British groom are completely correct. The British are marching on Lexington and Concord by sea, which means they'll be going after Samuel Adams and John Hancock, not to mention the colonists' stores of guns and ammunition. Not if we get there first. We have no time to waste. Lives are at stake. Warn every volunteer from here to Concord. Wake them up. Knock on every door if need be. I'll go by land, out through Boston Neck. Right. After I set the signal at North Church to let everyone know the British are coming by sea, I'll cross the river and arrange for a horse in Charlestown. It will be dangerous, but if one meets with trouble, perhaps the other will get through. We've got to be part of this. But James, I'm verging on treachery already. You're looking at it all wrong. This is history in the making. Dr. Franklin needs us to observe. Otherwise, who will ever know what actually happened this night? You're right. The truth must be told. We'd like to come with you. Yes, to describe these events for Dr. Franklin's newspaper. The whole world must learn of such momentous happenings. Huh. They would make good cover. We'll help raise the alarm. I am well raised, Mr. Dawes, but I can be loud. She can. Breaks glass all the time. All right, then. Come along. Hold on. I don't know if Dr. Franklin would consent to my putting you two in danger. Sir, Dr. Franklin's right-hand man, Moses, sent us here. And Dr. Franklin is behind us 100%. Philadelphia to Boston in just 13 days? I still find that nearly impossible. With all due respect, sir, nearly impossible and impossible are two distinctly different things. And we have to cover this story and let people know what happens. Very good, then. Godspeed. And write well. Tell the world of our gallant boys and our midnight ride to stop the bloodshed. Yes! <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Newman, but the British regulars are definitely on the move, and they are preparing to cross the Charles River. Two lanterns, then? Yes, just as we agreed. One of by land, two of by sea. The whole city will be able to see them from the belfry. Do you hear that? Sounds like soldiers. We don't have much time. to muffle the oars. Great idea. Too bad about the full moon, though. I feel like there's a lantern on us. Shh. The Somerset. Paul, over here! Deacon Larkin, reliable as always. I saw the lanterns. <laughs> My father's horse, as promised. I hope she's fast. Many a race for me. Watch out for the red bellies! The roads are crawling with them. Look to the north. Yes, 
It's the regulars. Whoa! Good eyes, girl. I believe the British are crossing to Cambridge. We've no time to lose! Whoa! <laughs> What's the matter? Riders coming. British patrol. Perfect stopping place for them. Clockhouse James, known for its peace and quiet. Sound the alarm! Hold! People are sleeping here. Keep the noise down. Noise? You'll have noise enough before long. The regulars are coming. Help me wake the house. Coming! Don't break it down. What's going on, Paul? John, Sam, the regulars are on the move. They mean to capture you two and all the munitions they can find. We'll gather up our things and repair to Buckman Tavern to plan our escape. James, how was your ride? Incredible. James, take care of the horses. I'll help. Mr. Revere's courage is amazing. When I tell the story, he'll be famous. But his is only half the story. Mr. Dawes has been doing the same thing just as amazingly. I can only write what I witness, and I've been with Paul Revere. I witness great events too. From now on, I'll be a journalist. I can't let people get all their news from James. Mr. Dawes and I are riding on the Concord. We'll understand if you don't want to come. And miss a huge story? Of course, Sarah may want to stay. Not a chance. My horse is tired. He's had a long night. We all have. There's a rider coming. Revere? Dawes? Dr. Prescott, the freedom fighter? Call me Samuel. I heard about your ride, Paul Revere, and I thought I'd join you. You! Hold there! Let's split up. See you in Concord. My horse will never make it. It will now. Go. They won't do anything to me. I'm a British subject. You're also a brave girl. Yeah! If you're staying, I'm staying. Go, Mr. Revere, and good luck. You're in my charge. The others will get the message through. You, what's your name? Revere, Paul Revere. Boston's famous express rider. What brings you out tonight? I see you've been riding hard, alerting the countryside of our regiments headed this way. I won't deny it. Dismount, sir. Sergeant, take his horse, Mr. Revere. If you attempt to run or we are insulted, you'll pay the price. You may do as you please. What are you two doing out here? Shouldn't you be in bed, leaving such treasonous activities to your elders? I've committed no treason. I'm a loyal British subject from a respectable English family. Oh, but of course. Pardon me for not recognizing you immediately, your ladyship. <laughs> it was the uh, muddy face and dirty hair that had me fooled. Sergeant, round up these urchins. We'll need someone to clean up after the horses. <laughs> Listen, a skirmish ahead. Sergeant, prepare the men to engage. What about the prisoners, sir? They're traitors. We shall deliver them to the civil authorities. But they'll slow us down, sir. You're right, Sergeant. Release them, but keep the horse. It's fresher than ours. Yes, sir. You're free. <gasps> I strongly suggest you go home. Don't let our patrols catch you on these roads again. 
Company forward! Come, let us go. Where are we going? Back to Lexington. We have to help Hancock and Adams escape. What a story this is going to be! Yes, and I plan to help write it. Thanks for your help. You'll be safe here at the inn. Thanks for letting us come along. All the world will know of your brave acts when my newspaper article is published. <sighs> Gotta get these notes down while tonight's events are fresh in my mind. I'll have a little something for you to include with your dispatch. What is that? Your autobiography? No, just the half of the story you left out. The truth must be told. How I wish for a day when words will fly across the sea at the speed of lightning and not wait these long, interminable months at sea. I worry overmuch about the colonies, I hope, but I fear that this tense situation is headed for confrontation, not compromise. I fear for my friends and my allies. I fear for Moses, without whom my life at home could not go on. I fear for James, Sarah, and Henri, the young ones in my charge. This is no time to be bold and brash, but try to tell that to youthful souls caught up in the passion of the times. In the end, no man or woman can remain neutral. There's a day of reckoning coming, and nothing I can do will prevent it. Get my independence, I declare it on the dotted line.